Hey everyone, welcome to introduction to Web 3.0 course. My name is Avi and I'm going to be your instructor for this course. First of all, congratulations for being here. You have already taken the first step. Majority of the people never really do this and they never take the first step. So you're already ahead of 90% of the people. So congratulations again, pat your back, fasten your seat belts, and let's dive right in. All right, so let's look at what we're going to learn in this course. Uh, Ethereum, the first thing is Ethereum, obviously, why not Bitcoin? Why not Solana? Why not any other blockchain? Because Ethereum is sort of the first smart contract platform, right? Because, okay, Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency and the first blockchain, but it was like the research project of Satoshi Nakamoto to prove that something like a blockchain can actually work. On the other hand, Ethereum is when the smart contract platforms actually came up. Vitalik Buterin came up with this idea that we can actually make the money uh, programmable. So Ethereum is basically programmable money. And it brought a platform for smart contracts, which actually gave rise to the whole Web3 industry the way it is today, because all, because all these Web3 applications are based on something like Ethereum, right? Ethereum is the first smart contract platform. It is the most widely used and you have the most opportunities. The most important thing is most opportunities as a Web3 developer are going to be in Ethereum. So that's why we are learning Ethereum. And let's, uh, let's talk about how to learn this, right? So the next thing would be Solidity. So Solidity is the programming language that powers Ethereum and to write Ethereum smart contracts, we need to learn Solidity. So we will be learning Solidity. Also, it's not just for Ethereum because a lot of other uh, layer two blockchains like Polygon, Matic and all these extra layer two protocols also use Solidity and Ethereum because they're based on Ethereum, right? So after learning Solidity, you'll be able to write contracts for Ethereum, uh, Polygon, Binance Smart Chain and Aave and a bunch of other stuff, right? So that's why we're going to learn Solidity. And next up is Hard Hat. Hard Hat is like going to be our uh, development environment because a lot of the things that you will have to do, inc including like setting up your own local blockchain, right? So basically a node of Ethereum running on your local machine, which will help with development, which will help with testing and like a bunch of things that Hard Hat gives us. So we can read the documentation and learn more. But yeah, Hard Hat. Then the next thing is going to be Waffle. Waffle is used for testing, right? So basically testing becomes critically important when you're writing smart contracts, because again, smart contracts are immutable by default. So once your contract is actually deployed on the mainnet, it is as is, right? It doesn't get changed. Changing it is a very uh, difficult process. And if it's flawed, when it's get there, it basically, it's going to be flawed forever, right? Like, because the software itself is immutable. So yeah, that's why we need to test everything that we do, especially on the smart contract side, and we'll use Waffle for it. So ethers.js is a library that will help us to connect with the Ethereum network and perform operations, interacting with smart contracts and all this from our Web2 application, right? You can also use Web3.js, but I like ethers.js more because it has a bunch of nifty features and easy to use API and good documentation so that we can easily get started and do everything that we can do on the Ethereum network. Right. And the next thing is MetaMask. So uh, we're going to set up a wallet. MetaMask is basically your application which will host your uh, Ethereum account. Right. So it will be a web extension. So we will install MetaMask and we will set it up in the next video and we will use MetaMask as a portal to the Web3 world. Right. So your web app will connect to the blockchain using your wallet. So your wallet is where actually your Ethereum is stored and using your Ethereum, you will be able to make transactions. So uh, we'll set it up in the next video. but for now, uh, yeah, Next.js, the most popular thing in uh, most popular React framework at this point, a lot of the Web3 companies and dApps are built on Next.js. It's just a personal preference. I like Next.js, so we're going to build our web app using Next.js, but you can also like go around and play with other frameworks like Vue.js or I don't know, Svelte or Remix Run is getting popular these days, but Next.js is sort of the standard one and a lot of companies are already using it. So. And this knowledge is going to be transferable because this is your web two knowledge. We'll not focus on, uh, we'll not focus a lot on the react side of things in this course, but anyway, we're going to use next years and tailwind CSS for styling the web application. And yeah, that's it. So, uh, basically this is going to be your course and we're going to build projects and we're going to build multiple projects. And like, I hope that that will help you to build a portfolio and to gain the skills which are required to be a web three developer. And once you've done this, we will also have mentorship calls. So we will catch up on a weekly or bi-weekly level and we will try to figure out a way for you to plug into the system and to get a job as a Web3 developer. But that's up to you if you want to do a job or if you want to build your own Web3 startup. 
with the skills that you will learn in this course, you will be ready to build anything and you will be good to go as a Web 3.0 developer. So yeah, let's get started. All right, so let's just understand a little bit of the theoretical aspect of the blockchain. Uh, basically, the blockchain is a network of nodes, right? All these computers that you see on the screen, these can be different nodes which are running the same software, right? In our case, they are going to be running the Ethereum virtual machine. So the Ethereum network is comprised of these nodes which are distributed around the world. People like you and me are basically running these nodes. Obviously, it cannot be run from like your laptop, which is not powerful enough because Ethereum is a huge network at this point. So these computers are powerful and they consume a lot of electricity and a lot of network bandwidth to actually just sustain the Ethereum network. This is the reason the token was invented, right? So basically, these guys will get paid for running this job and you for example, you deploy a smart contract, you will pay some money in form of gas fee to these guys, right? Every instruction that gets executed, basically everything that happens on the blockchain, these people are going to make that happen. These people are, their, their systems, their servers are actually going to do this work for you. So you're going to pay them with gas fee. So that is the reason why doing a transaction costs some gas fee on Ethereum. Now, you can dive into details of proof of work and proof of stake. Proof of work is basically all these net, all these servers nodes, they were competing against each other to mine a particular block, but uh, that would also increase the gas fee and it would just make it difficult to scale. But now we are moving to proof of stake in Ethereum 2.0. But anyway, you don't have to worry too much about that. That doesn't impact the way we develop these smart contracts and actually deploy them. That's just fundamentally how the blockchain network functions, right? So anyway, so the blockchain network is a network of computers. They are running the same code. So the smart contract that you write is when you deploy that smart contract, it basically means that you're sending that contract to all these computers. And then anyone who interacts with that contract will run those functions and those functions are executed by these computers. So this in a way, if you're coming from the web to world, this is going to be the backend of your distributed uh, DAP, basically decentralized application, right? And the blockchain itself, uh, the blocks, basically, if you think of it uh, on the most fundamental level, it's like a linked list, right? So the link between different blocks is a hash. Each block has a hash, right? So let's say there's a block one, which is the first block in the blockchain, which has some data. It will store obviously some data and some hash. And the next block will contain the previous hash. And it's uh, the next block will contain the, that hash. I mean, the previous blocks hash and so on, right? So basically think of it as a data structure that keeps growing as more and more transactions happen. Each function execution is almost like a transaction because it, it records, if it records some data, you can also write functions to just read data. So reading data is going to be free, right? It's free for you to see how much ether you have and it's free for you to view the data on the blockchain. But when you want to write to the blockchain, this is when you have to pay gas fee and this is when a new block is added. So all the new data that gets added to a particular block stays there forever. You cannot go back and edit a previous block. All the new data will be recorded in a new block and the previous data stays the way it is forever, right? It's immutable by default. So that's the concept of the blockchain and this block can uh, carry data of various sizes, right? So if you look at, if you just Google um, Ethereum, If you just Google Ethereum block size, you can see that it's around 80 KB. But the thing is, it varies, right? It, it's not like a uh, standard size. Let's, uh, yeah. So if you look at this link, it shows you the uh, block size over time. If you look at five year chart, at first it was like, it's in bytes. So it's like 1.6. So 1 KB, it starts from 1, 2 KB. And today it's at around 100 KB, right? So it keeps increasing over time. But uh, it doesn't matter to us. Basically, what this means is each block has some data, some amount of transactions that it stores. And every time new transactions happen, will happen in the next block. And this way, the data integrity of the data remains, right? So if you have some money and you spend it, that transaction is recorded in block two, then you cannot spend that money again in block three, right? So that would be a corrupt state. So that's why by default this, and if you even, if a hacker gets control of a system and manipulates previous blocks, it would just reject network would reject it because network is again run by computers around the world. So the hacker will have to hack all the computers at the same time and make the exact same edits to the blockchain in every computer, which is theoretically impossible, right? That's why it's very secure and it's touted. It's brilliant design, right? Uh, the blockchain design is touted as one of the most brilliant innovations of our generation. So that's the whole concept behind the blockchain. And I hope this helps you gain a little bit of context. So let me close these and let's set up the MetaMask wallet. All right, so MetaMask is like the most famous wallet for Ethereum. 
it's a crypto wallet and it's a gateway to blockchain apps as you can see in, on their website so you can download it for chrome or install it on your mobile also they have mobile apps but for now we'll just install it on my browser i'm using brave browser you can also use chrome it works exact same because brave is based on chromium so anyway so metamask is like this chrome extension and let me install it so metamask will let us create or import an ethereum account and use it with a lot of uh, different dapps so let's let's set up the account right let me enable the extension now if you look at uh, metamask you can connect to ethereum and to the decentralized web uh, we'll get started you can import your existing account if you already have one but for the course let me just show you how to because there might be people who have never done this before so uh, you can create a wallet and this is just analytics stuff okay let's just help them and you need to set a password this is going to be a password for your wallet so let me set a password right uh, make sure you remember the password because otherwise you'll lock yourself out of the wallet now there's there's a small video that they'll show you basically how to secure your wallet uh, i'm not going to watch this right now you can watch it if you want to but basically it just uh, tells you what the secret phrase is and how you should like do things so if you go to the next screen it will show you the secret phrase right so this secret phrase is actually going to be your key right think of it as your key to your ethereum wallet because if anyone gets access to this they can access your wallet and they can take all your money from your wallet for this we are just going to this is just a test wallet that i am making for the sake of this course and there will not be any real money on it so i don't mind disclosing this but this is something that you wouldn't disclose to anyone so you can write it down on a piece of paper or you can store it in your locker or something like this so what i'm going to do right now is i'm just going to copy this and i'm going to put it in my uh, locker so let me add an item ethereum wallet right and i'll put the secret phrase here so anyway I've, I've copied this thing and for now so i'll have to paste this in the right order so just to make things easy let me um, okay let me open this so moment orange mo so like you will basically do all these words right this is just them verifying that you have actually copied the wallet so let me just quickly do this Right, so I can basically they're confirming that I have stored this safely because if you lose this, you basically lose your account at that moment. You cannot uh, recover your account again. So your secret recovery phase is like like I said, it's the key to your locker, and you have to say keep it safe. Right. So uh, all done now. Our Ethereum wallet is set up, and this is just them showing me what they have. And this is the wallet itself. If you open the extension, it will open the exact same thing. And right now it's on the main network. We can also enable test networks. So let me just go to the settings and show test networks, right? Let me close this tab. We don't need it. But yeah, so this is the Ethereum wallet we just created. And right now you can see there are so many test networks. And this is going to be the network we set up on our local machine. I'll show you how to do that. But for now, just understand that we can use something like Robston. And we want to fund this wallet. Right now there's nothing here. So Robston is a test network. So the Ethereum that you will have here is basically testing money, right? It will not be real money, but it, will, it is still a network. So, so like I said, when I explained the blockchain that a network of systems is running around the world to maintain the Ethereum mainnet, Robston is also a network similar to that. It's not on the same scale, it's a smaller scale, but it's a real network that you can actually test your applications in. So there's something called Faucet. So you can just Google Robston Faucet. So Faucet is something that we can use to actually receive some Ether. As you can see, we have nothing here. If we, our balance is zero ETH, so we can't really do much on the test network. On the local, when we set up our local environment, we will get a lot of ETH to play around. But on the test network, which is actually running around the world, we will need some test net, uh, test ETH. So we can open these uh, faucets and we can ask them for some ETH, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this address and I'll ask them to send me some ether and we can try this with most of these. Uh... Oh, I hate this. Let me do this quickly. I suck at this thing. 
I just don't have the patience. Okay, looks like this is a buggy one, but basically it's going to be a trial and error, right? Because they're going to need to, again, error. I hope this one works at least. Oh yeah, so this one just sent us 0 0.3 ether. We can see the transaction hash. So let me open this transaction hash and you can see that it's a testnet transaction. So etherscan is a website that can that will let you use the transactions, right? Like I said, every transaction is on the blockchain. It's public and it's across the world. So etherscan will store the data about every transaction. You can see that this is the hash of the transaction. This is from to what was the value? What was the gas fee and like transaction cost and all this? You can see more details, right? You can see gas price and the ethereum chain and all these things so uh, the network stores a bunch of data around every transaction it's still pending but once this transaction is settled basically we will start seeing uh, 0 0.3 ETH. okay so it's settled now and we can see that i have received 0 0.3 ETH. i can use these to run my test transactions and all this right so uh, start using faucets you can try it try around there there might be more links that i haven't tried that actually will help you to get more uh, tested test ethereum so you can use that to power your wallet, right? So let me go back now. And yeah, so that's it for the wallet setup. Now we have a wallet setup. We are not using this immediately, but we're going to use it eventually. So we have a wallet now. We have some ETH there to play around. We can switch networks and uh, that that's it. So once you are at this point, you can actually go and start writing code. So let's do that right now. All right, thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you liked this one. If it was helpful, please smash the like button. Leave a comment down below if you have any other questions. You can also reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter. I'll leave my links in the description and on the screen. So yeah, looking forward to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.